Father, I thank you for what you're doing here. Lord, I want to lay hold of the words you gave me earlier, that this is not on me, it's on you. <laughs> you're, you're the one who provides the meal, who draws our hearts and satisfies us deeply. So we just say yes and amen to that. Bring it. And whatever surprises you got, hallelujah, let them go. Amen. Okay, well, welcome to a new month. Yeah? Okay, almost. I mean, I know, we're, we're doing this a couple days ahead, right? Saturday night, technically. Um, and you will look, you will see a new moon. And again, we get other people come online. We get, it's just weird sometimes, whether through Facebook or someone subscribing. I have no idea where a lot of these people come from. <laughs> it's a little scary sometimes. It was like, okay, welcome to the crazy. You know, here we are. But uh, we'll just keep going. But that's, I always want to then do a little bit of tea up. You guys know this, that each month we work on our, a watchman apostolic anointing. So we have God's words as links to time. It's just that, that, direct it's not complicated and we just pay attention to that because we feel like god time stamped it for a reason and we want to hear what the spirit is saying say is saying. is saying yeah there's more than what he has said it's what he is saying and one of the things i thank the spirit for every morning is thank you that you lead me into all truth Amen. not that you led me he has done that but that you lead me this is an ongoing basis and there's more it's usually the situation where Jesus says, I have much more to tell you, but you can't tolerate it yet. You can't bear it yet. And he's that way with me. So bit by bit, moment by moment. And then the whole thing about why first fruits. We're doing first fruits, right? Okay. First fruits is simply the time when we bring the best. We bring the first portion of our time, our energy, our focus, our resources, and we bring to the Lord. And we say, we're honoring you. We're taking time out now. Because if we honor him first, seek ye... First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be Amen. added unto you, right? Yeah. So, but let me just tie it in with another scripture that you know pretty well, right? Trust in the Lord with what? And lean not on your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge, Amen. right? And he will direct your? Yes. Okay. So a lot of people know that one. I love this picture as a picture of trust, Right? Got a lot of trust there, isn't it? Oh, oh, so sorry. We have kids that have come in through the back door. Okay, no worries. <laughs> so we want to though keep going into the same section. You all know where this is from, right? Where is it from? Oh, really? You don't know where this is from? What? Proverbs. Proverbs, yeah. Three? Oh, come on. I thought you guys would all know this one. Wow. Okay. We're going to have to do some remedial training here. Psalms 103. No. Proverbs 3. Okay. There's a three. <laughs> Psalm 103 as far as the east is from the west. Okay. So as far as the east is from the west, so far will I rem remove your memory from the scripture. That's not God's version. That's that's the enemy's version. <laughs> okay, everybody say Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Right. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know, I use this as part of when I when I pray before the Lord. Part of I enter into a time of confession. The Lord, I I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I've done and not done, right? That I have not loved you with all of my heart. I haven't trusted you with all of my being. I've leaned on my own understanding and I've been wise in my own eyes. That just pretty well covers it, <laughs> okay? And it just comes right out of here. Because I realize he's telling me to do this, but I realize there's ways in which I haven't. And then I haven't loved my neighbor as myself. I haven't loved my brothers and sisters in Christ as Jesus does. And then I move into some other stuff. See, I just want to get that out right I just wanna it's not a religious thing it's just me clearing the air so the enemy has no hold no access points and then I do some more but anyway so but what we'd like to do is keep reading on this do not be wise in your own eyes fear the Lord and depart from evil it will bring what health, health to your flesh and strength to your bones and then this continues honor the Lord with all your all your wealth and with the first fruits of all of your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with 
wine. Okay, you want new wine? Yes. Okay. So right there, with all the first fruits of all your increase. So it's very simple. We get into a new month. It's one of God's cycles. It's 20 times with the moon. I won't go into all the references about that, but the new moon celebration, the first of the month celebration, continues on even in the new heaven and earth, according to Isaiah. So we do that. And then we go to the Word, and we just look at time stamps for what the month is and the tribe that is linked to that month. And we dig in. And this is one of those months, guys, that just... It's like this, okay? It's a veritable buffet, okay? There's just, <laughs> there's, there's a lot in this month. And that is always really good news and really bad news for me in that, because it's like, okay, now what? What, what out of that? And it's a challenge sometimes, but part of what I felt like he was pressing on me this is a process in which he does for me, right? He puts me into the word and then he just simmers me in it. And I usually end up getting what he's doing down here, but then I have to try to get it here. This is part of what we want to do at the first fruits of each month. I want to reconnect you with the scriptures that are tied into this month because I believe he's time stamped them for a reason. So you're marinating in them. He's the giver of the feast. I, I will tell you this because late this afternoon I, I was I was struggling because I really didn't feel like it was very coherent and he and so I'm journaling to the Lord and in the middle of that he says this you forget yourself you forget how much I love my people those who gather and those who cannot or will not they have been faithful to pray and I am faithful to answer this is not on you it's on me I am the giver of this feast. I am the convener of this tribe. I am the one who will supply the meat and drink. I am the only one who can do this so they are satisfied. And it was kind of like, you know, I, I, I love when there's a time when God puts me in my place, but then because of that also releases some of the pressure, right? But it was kind of funny for, to hear him use the phrase, you forget yourself. Have you ever heard that phrase? It's kind of like when you, you, you're, you're, you're trying to step, because I was whining about it. Like, get over yourself. Like, yeah, yeah, it's what it is. You forget yourself. It's like you're, you're, you're trying to get it back down. And so that's the way. So rather than trying to be too focused sometimes, then I've gotten more comfortable. Well, let's get you all marinating then. Okay? How many did you get the ping? And how many read it? How many read the scriptures? Okay, yeah. Pretty helpful. It is pretty easy to do, right? Okay. For those of you watching, if you've signed up on the thing, we send you out that ping, get you ready for it. Okay, so we've gone through the first month. We just come, we're just coming through the finish of that, right? You know the anchor events for that, coming out of Egypt. And then of course the crucifixion, we have of course yet another, another which is 40 years after leaving <coughs> Egypt, they actually cross over to the promised land. But these are the two big anchors that I wanna look at. And we're looking at time in this, and so we know that in the third month, they're going to meet out with God at Mount Sinai, right? And the presence is going to come there, the word, the word is going to speak to them, and then the word's going to be given. And then if we fast forward some 1,500 years into Acts chapter 2, Pentecost, the fire of God comes down. So we're in this really interesting dimension between the two. And it is a time of both looking back and remembering and then also looking forward into what's there. But there's this danger. You can look back to where you've come out of, but if you start longing to go back, it's a different matter. Okay? Oh, wasn't it so great when... Da, 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 da. Okay? Real danger. You want to look back to remember what God's done, where he's brought you, the freedom you have, but now your eyes get really fixed forward. And this second month in here is really the opportune time when God begins to do that. So I mentioned this. Iyar is one of the two names. Ziv is the other. You'll find Ziv in uh, the book of Kings. And Iyar, that, the word for Iyar, it's connected to Exodus 15. If you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you... Pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees. I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And that word, 
right there, Iyar, is an acrostic. I am God, your healer. And so it's just one of these times. And that makes a lot of sense given that if you've just broken out of something that held you captive for many a years, you're free, but there's an adjustment time and there's often a healing that's necessary for that, right? Most of the time, we want to go from one new thing right to the next. And God's like, you know what? That's not going to work for you. I, I need, you need some adjustment time between this and that, right? Do you get that? Most of us don't like interim anything, right? Interim house, interim leader, interim job, interim spouse. No, you don't want to, okay. You don't do that, but we had people that are almost like that. Okay, so. So years ago, I kind of felt like God gave me this download on it that really what it was, it was the hinge month. Say hinge month. Hinge month. Okay, so the first month you have the major anchor of Passover. The third month you've got Pentecost. And you've got this second month right here, which is the pin that holds these two things together. And I suddenly realized just how important it is and how a hinge functions or doesn't function. And of course, I want to upgrade the hinge to this. Can you see the size of that hinge? What is this safe and door without a hinge? A box that you can't access. <laughs> I mean, think how many hinges did you use just getting here tonight? Out your door, in the car, on the, in, you know, on a, the hinges are just like, they're just one of the most amazing inventions. So I think this is a, probably a more appropriate understanding of the hinge, but let's do this then. Passover's there. Pentecost is there, which is interesting because Passover is that entrance way, is that open door. Pentecost is going to come into the, as we get into Pentecost, is talking about the provision of God by the abundance of barley harvest, by the Holy Spirit, by the word of God given. And these have to be connected. And so right in there, you get the second month. And then this connects in because we also always look at the tribes. And when God reordered the tribes, he said the first tribe is Judah, which makes sense because Judah is the door, right? Judah is the door right at the gate of the tabernacle to get in, worship and warfare. And then Zebulun is the third one, which has to do with riches, right? It's, it's the commerce tribe. It's the trading tribe is Zebulun. And so that access point, but again, they need to be connected. Sometimes Judah and Zebulun won't connect real well together. Just telling you, those two tribes at times can have some challenges. But if you put Issachar in the middle, now you've got something else going. Issachar bridges the gap between the two. And it's yoked. By the way, this is one of the prophecies that is spoken over the tribe of Issachar by the father. Issachar is a strong donkey lying down between two burdens. Do you see the burdens there? You've got Judah and Zebulun. And it helps tie those together. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Here's another prophecy by Moses. Rejoice, Zebulun, and you're going out. And you, Issachar, in your tents, they will summon they. Who's the they? Who's the they? Issachar and Zebulun together. They. They will summon peoples to the mountain and offer sacrifice of righteousness. They will feast on the abundance of the seas, on the treasures hidden in the sand. Sound good? Would you like that prophetic word? You have to know that within, within the Jewish culture, to talk about almost any partnership, you'll talk about Issachar and Zebulun. It's a symbiotic, do you know what symbiotic means? Mutually beneficial relationship. Issachar was always considered the Torah tribe, okay? Because they knew the word deeply. Zebulun was always the commerce tribe. And so it was seen that they would interact together. Issachar would help Zebulun understand the word and the principles and how to walk in alignment with God and Zebulun would help support that and so together it's seen that they're critical. If you ever wonder why Jews have been so successful financially around the world you have to understand this partnership. Something which the church just totally missed. <laughs> okay, We really didn't know how to do that. But what I love about this is that those two together summon peoples to the mountain. They offer sacrifice of righteousness. They feast on the abundance of the seas. 
on treasures hidden in the sand. There's tremendous promise in that. Does that sound encouraging? That's what we move into. We feel all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are what? Yes, yes, and, amen. yes and amen. Okay? And so we look at the blessings on these tribes and say, okay, Lord, how in this time, in this month, will that apply to me? So, Issachar is the tribe, the month of Iyar and Ziv. There's 44 biblical references about the tribe of Issachar. This is the one that most of you know. The tribe of Issachar, read the rest of that. How many of you need to understand the times? Okay. See, what Issachar is unique because, again, remember that the Torah tribe, they had this dual thing going on. They studied the word. They knew the word so well. But then they could look out at the times and seasons and look and compare the two and see what's going on and therefore what Israel should do. It's the very same thing we're trying to work in here, right? You get this. We move under an Issachar anointing. We hope, we trust, we believe. Help tee you up. Okay, about things that are going on. Yeah, you okay with this? Yes. Okay, let me just throw some other things at you to show you what God, where God has time-stamped this month. 14 other uh, links about this particular month. Additional time-stamps. There's a census that is taken. God has Moses count all the tribes. He's preparing them for war. And he does a counting. Interesting, right? Is there any other time when there's a census done in Scripture? Yeah, who does it? Good or bad? bad? Really bad, right? Because he's boasting on that. But when God initiates, this is time to take count because we're going to engage in a battle. Here's another thing. Do-over. There's a second Passover available for those who are not able to celebrate in the first month. So this month has kind of a do-over capability, in it, right? Kind of a catch-up thing. You good with that? You need a do-over in any way? Okay. <laughs> Some of you need to do Passover again. i got to pass over that one more time, okay? Okay. It's also a transition time because this is when Solomon begins the temple, but it's also when the second temple is begun by Zerubbabel in the same month. So you pay attention to these things because when God aligns those and tells you about it, he didn't need to tell you exactly when the temple started, but he had a reason for it. It was something getting started in this time. It was about, okay, I'll get to there in a minute. Let me keep going. And then here's some, some significant, what we call non-biblical. They're beyond biblical time frame. But on Iyer 5 in 1948, Israel became a state. Do you see that as being a little bit of a pivotal event? Okay, hinge month, pivot month. Wasn't the end of it, was a pivot. How about this? On Iyer 18 in 1948, the IDF, that's the Israeli Defense Force, was created. Okay, not the end, but a pivot point. How about this one? In Iyer 28, Jerusalem was reclaimed. Big deal, okay? Pivot point. You get this? It's a point. It's a hinge month when things shift. They're not there yet, but it's getting you ready for what's next. Okay, I'm going to keep going. You doing so far? Yeah. Okay, I'm just throwing a lot of stuff at you. You can watch the replay. These months are connected. We talked last week about counting the what? Omer. Counting the Omer. God sets it down very specifically. I want you to count up from the festival of first fruits when the barley harvest came in, 50 days, four, seven weeks of seven plus one, and it links the two so that we'll never forget that it's not enough just to get free. You've got to get to where God is. And if the church somehow missed this connection between the crucifixion and resurrection and what happens in Acts chapter 2, it just... The more I see this, the more that just kind of amazes me. So, anyway, because of that link, though, he wants us to move from freedom into fullness. There are a number of people who have come, they've made a, a decision for Jesus, but they were never led into more. And if they survive, it, it, you know, but there's more. From this, from salvation into sanctification. Do you get that? The sanctification happened to you, but the uh, salvation did. The sanctification is something that's a process that's going on. You were sealed by the Holy Spirit versus being saturated. I think those are the two best words. Okay? Because in John 20, Jesus breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? They receive it, 
But then he's, they're told later, don't leave until the power from on high, the saturation of the Spirit comes. So anybody that you meet who knows Jesus, who's been had a conversion, they were sealed with the Holy Spirit. They got it. It's just that they haven't gotten the saturation point most of the time because they just didn't know. Or if they did know, they're just too afraid. And then it moves from this, what God accomplished for us when really completely passive, right? The Israelites didn't do anything. They're just, just out there. To God moving to what he wants to accomplish with us. Okay? So that's where the fullness sanctification being saturated and the partnership with God is there. And we're in this time right in between those two. And so he brings them out, but they're kind of an amoeba. <laughs> okay? Let, let me show you what I mean by that. Here they are in Egypt. I'm sure their houses weren't this nice. <laughs> But you need to get an understanding of the structure they were in. Where was it highly structured for them? They had their place. They had their job. They were slaves. They were just like really underpaid employees. I, that's probably a not, you know what I'm saying. But they, their lives were not their own. But, but it worked in a way. And they knew their job. And there was a lot of structure to it. And then, you know, Moses comes along. And, of course, they do a jailbreak. So all that empty housing, I'm sure real estate values in Egypt had to go through a change. And, you know, they had to get out. And they're kind of in this, this amoeba. They're not quite sure, you know, now where you camp on any given day is going to be different, right? And where you are. And they're kind of moving around. And there'll come a time when God reorganizes them out at the Mount after Pentecost and they will realign then but they've gone from a set structure out to being a mobilized force okay but like all things even if you go into the armed services you go through a time when your old structure is really torn down they make you kind of amoeba like <laughs> yeah. okay because then they need to then out of that begin to reset some structure so God's got a, this, this hinge time when there's some of that going on and God's like taking this mesh and pushing it here and pushing it here. That's where we are right now. <laughs> I should have had some Play-Doh here. You would have gotten it. Sorry, I don't have something to light on fire this week. It's only, yeah, my wife's almost like, okay, smoke, de she's looking at the smoke detector. You tracking a little bit here? Okay, I just want to get you an idea of this. And so this is kind of what it looks like. And I looked that there were sort of six things that just sort of popped out here. And I don't know that I can develop them all tonight, but I want to put them out to you. So we're in this countdown. And while they're in this state, God begins to push and pull. There's the issue of the meat and the manna, right? The quail and the bread. That, that whole thing starts to come down. So say meat and manna. Meat and manna. Okay. Then there's the issue about water and about warfare. Okay? They're going to grumble about water and they're going to have to go to battle. Say water and warfare. Water and warfare. Don't you like that I get these things with M's and stuff? Sorry, it just works for me. Okay. And then there's something more because there's a logistical thing going on there. So they've got to get under management and they've got to stay in movement. Say management and movement. Management. These are just three couplets. Okay? Things that are kind of connected together. And I still don't even have a full understanding of, of how it works, but I know that it does because when God does something like that, he sits it down here in my craw. And he just, you know, and then over time, he'll reveal things and say things into it. And I hope it's in a timely manner so I can bring it to you, but sometimes it's not. So you'll have to wait. But all of this is putting a level of kind of pressure where these things are getting pushed and pulled. And there is this feeling if you're inside of that. Yeah, there's a bit of pressure going on. And there's an adjustment to how they interact with God, with God about God provision, with each other, with leadership, right? With the enemy, God's enemy. And in the midst of all of that, he keeps them moving. You can't stay stuck in a structure. He's broken you out of one. He's going to move into a new kind of structure that's a living organism, that's a mobilized force. But in the meanwhile, there's this kind of Play-Doh process here. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Always. So, meet Manna. Let's just do a couple of scriptures here. Uh, you want to get the mic there? Yep. By the way, we're working on getting a cordless mic, so you guys... <laughs> 
That way, when you're passing around, you don't clothesline somebody on the way by. So, okay, let's read this, please. Yep. Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Okay, so re remember the look back versus the what? The longing, right? Okay, it's really hard sometimes when we move out of a highly structured situation to be in where it's just a little amoeba-like. Okay, there's a process here. God's trying to draw and see how are you going to do. So how does God respond to all this? Say tough nuts. Okay, yeah, he's going to take care of them. Keep going. Then Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, At evening you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your complaints against the Lord. But what are we that you complain against us? Okay. <laughs> I find it kind of interesting. Have you ever wondered about why it's evening and morning? What comes in the evening? What comes in the evening? The quail. What comes in the morning? Okay, the manna, right? The man and manna means what? What is it? It's like what? I love that naming. How's that for creative license? What? Okay, I'm trying to think what you'd name your kids then. Ouch! No, okay, you just your first reaction to it, right? Well, so why the quail at night and why the man in the morning? Oh, come on, you're a farm person. <laughs> why would you have the birds in the evening? And they the, go to ro roost at night. Because what? They go to roost at night. They go to roost at night? Why else? I would think because if you put them both at the same time, they're going to eat all the manna. Don't get overly spiritual. Sometimes God's just plain practical. Hello? Okay. Did those birds lay eggs? <laughs> I don't know. They might have. But did those particular ones? Quails? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, keep going. Also, Moses said, Okay, we've got a whole farming debate going on now. That's how they made the banana. Ben, ben, ah. ben, the ben, banana bread, that's right. <laughs> banana bagels, banana waffles. Okay. okay, keep going. Also, Moses said, This shall be seen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and in the morning bread to the full. For the Lord hears your complaints which you make against him. And what are we? Your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. Okay. One of the, what, are, what are you seeing from this? If God's drawing this down, he's time stamped it into this month. What's your heads up in this? Uh, Sorry? Transition from old ways to new ways. Uh, unexpected. Sort of drastic. Transition, yeah, yeah, unexpected, not an easy thing. Okay. Also, whoever's in leadership, when we're complaining to them, we really are complaining. Okay. About yeah. I need you to pay real close attention to this. The danger about murmuring in this time is really, I mean, God makes a big point of it, and He's going to do it again here in the next pair of couplets. You got meat and manna, you're going to catch it again with the water aspects, right? So in this time, do really guard your tongue. Whenever you got where God's broken you out of something, and you know, he may have broken you out of a, a set kind of diet or something, or broken you out of a relationship, broken you out of uh, a job situation or something else, and when you're in that time, you really have to watch how you speak about things, okay? Let's keep going. Add something? Yeah. Because it takes you right back to Egypt. It does, right? The murmuring yes. again. Looking back is fine, but you're not looking back with longing to what was. You're looking back to God, thank you for getting me out of that. 
right? In the midst of that, they could have gone, oh Lord, we are so grateful that you got our sorry butts out of slavery. But by the way, since you've done all that, we know you haven't brought us out here just to starve us to death. That is not you. Show us what, if there's something we need to do, if there's nothing we need to do, we just wait on you, right? It's very different. One, I'm looking back with longing. The other, I'm looking to remember what he did to get me here, and then I'm engaging. You know, we were much more guilty than they because they didn't really know the Lord very much at this point, and we do. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, they've been 400 years in with all those other gods and everything else, right? They really don't get who Yahweh is yet. He's showing them things. They've just heard him give his first title in a way once they've come out of Egypt when he says, I am the Lord, your healer. Okay, well, that's good, but now we're going to, now what? Okay, but I'm not sick, but I'm starving. <laughs> but you know something, they just came out of slavery. I'm sure their physical condition, they needed the Lord, their healer. Their healer, yeah. I mean, there was no, none of them got sick while in their time in the wilderness, unless it was a plague or they were bit by the snake, a whole other series of things. But none of that stuff came, but, and their clothing did not wear out. But again, all of this is God recalibrating them to the new. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, want to hand that to somebody? Over, oh, maybe over their shoulder. Can you see this picture? Can you see what he's got in his hand? It's a water. It's a water glass. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, "Why is it you have brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst?" Okay. Again, right? Who are they complaining against? Well, Moses and this. They're saying Moses, right? It's so often. Okay. We'll keep going here. So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. Okay. So this is a time when not only the people are being shifted around, but Moses is. You got to get, right? If there's anything that's going on, leadership will get, get dealt with also. Just remember, Peter was sifted like wheat, right? Leadership gets shifted. And if they'll respond right, then we move right. A lot of times, leadership can be some of the worst for being stiff-necked and stubborn. But God, this is the vision you gave me. Yeah, well, I gave you part of that. The rest of it was you. <laughs> and now it's time to lay it down. Right? One of my favorite illustrations of that is that, you know, it's estimated that Noah, it took him between 60 and 100 years to build the ark. And they used it for a year and 10 days and then came out of it. That was it. That wine skin took that long to build and was only used for a year and 10 days. If I was Moses, I'd go, but, 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 you know, like, nah, time to get out. Okay. Keep going, please, Nan. And the Lord said to Moses, go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod, which with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it that the people may drink. Yeah, but then here's where we go with this. Keep going. So he called the name of the place Massa, tempted, and Meribah, contention, because of the contention of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? Okay, now we get down to it. So the complaint, right, against Moses was really coming down to this point. Is God among us or not? God got this or not? You see, a lot of times it's easier for us to bitch about somebody or something else. And the reality is we're going... God's just not in this. Oops. <laughs> Do you understand? To me, this the water warfare one is the one that's just really working on me in this time. In part because they both involve rods, the rod, 
okay? The warfare thing we're going to look at. And rocks, okay? There's a rod and rock, rock and rod kind of thing going on here. And when that happens and they're right next to each other, I just go, okay, there's something you're trying to say here. Because that, that rod was a symbol of his authority, right? Yeah. And sometimes it's called Moses' rod, sometimes it's called God's, right? And in this case, back here, it's what he's supposed to strike the rock with. But then a while later, they gets into another situation, and God tells him to go out and do what to this rock? Speak, Speak to it. And what does he do instead? Speak. Strikes it. The danger always of that, when God wants us to move us into the next stage of our level of authority and understanding that even the physical manifestation that we had, we no longer need to depend on. It's always been about him. But now he removes that almost like it was a set of training wheels and says, okay, will you trust me and ride with this? But it's always going to get back down to this. Is the Lord among us or not? So say this. Is the Lord with me? Is the Lord with me? Or not? Or not. That's where it kind of comes down to. Is God with me or not? So let's get real candid on some of these things, okay? <laughs> God, are you with me or not? At least at least take the question to him if you're going to ask it. This is why it's contention and Meribah. And you know what it says later in Scripture about it? That the people tested me. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion at Meribah. And I would say to you, I need to go back and look at the Hebrew on that word if, but I think it's more when God speaks to you. Because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And so part of what he was walking with me today is I was before him on that going, Lord, is my heart in any way hard? And he was going, no, but it's bruised and tender. And that's why, and you'll pull away from me sometimes when I want to touch you. You get? But then he went on to say, but the one with the hard heart, I'll use the rod. <laughs> okay? But what amazes me is in the promise that what God spoke to Moses, first he takes him, he requires that he goes out in front of the very people who want to stone him, just so we're clear. <laughs> okay, God. You see, he's dealing with Moses in the midst of this, right? Because Moses gets the heat, so Moses goes, what are you doing? These people want us ready to stone me. God's going, okay. Go out and walk in front of them. Oh, that's a good solution. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and take in your hand the rod. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb. It's just amazing that God is, says, I will stand there on the rock before you in Horeb. By the way, Paul talks about the rock that they drank from. Do you remember that? And what does he say? Who was the rock? Christ. Christ was the living rock that they drank from. They all drank from the living rock. And so it just sort of stuns me that in the month after Passover, in the month after Jesus was beaten, the rock is struck. It's just, it's just like, okay, <laughs> that's clear. So his sacrifice, his work still functioning even in the midst of this transition. Okay, and then water and warfare. Somebody next. Connie? Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Okay, anybody tell me about Amalek? The Amalekites. The Amalekites. Pardon me? They weren't giants. No. That's the Nephilim. Amalek has to Okay, Amalek were the ones that would, would plague Israel by trying to pick off the stragglers in the back of the pack. Okay, Israel wasn't stomping on their turf or anything like that. They were the ones that would initiate it. They're the ones that pick away, pick away, pick away. Fast forward to the time of Esther, and there's a certain person there that is a descendant of the Amalekites. Who is that? Amen. Amen, that's right. The same spirit of wanting to destroy God's people. So 
First heads up right now, right? Amalek is still at work. The spirit of Amalek, the anti-Semitic spirit. By the way, you just saw it flare up big time in the New York Times. I don't know if you, if you saw about that with the cartoon and stuff. It's just like, wow, wow okay. Um, there's just stuff happening. That is also an antichrist spirit. Okay, so where and how is that going to flare up in this month? But I could almost guarantee it, you will see clear manifestations. Okay, okay, we'll keep going. So that's who, who came out and fought with Israel. Notice that it's they who came out and took Israel on, not Israel that went and took them on. Okay, okay, keep going. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Mm. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands one on one side and the other on the other side and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun so joshua defeated amalek and his people with the edge of the sword okay out of that if god's time stamped this battle and this strategy for this month what do you want to watch for victory you want to be looking for victory okay but there's this is a pathway through to victory you need help. That's right. Doing this alone ain't going to do it, right? There's a very interesting blend here of the supernatural and the natural. What part is the natural? Yeah, somebody's got to go out and go face to face with the sword. Okay? Moses just didn't sit up there and pray, right? There's a natural part that's got to be set in place. There's things that you're going to have to confront physically, emotionally. But there's another front as well, right? And that's in the spirit. And then what about Moses? How well did he do? Yeah. Needed help, right? Okay. We just set a whole new thing in place with intercession here. That's why we really do appreciate you bringing up about Scotty to pray for her because she's on point for that. Okay. And we got to have help. Kim and I really needed some more help in that thing. Okay, there's a lot to be covered. We probably know more about what all happens with y'all <laughs> than is reasonable, but we're able to do that because of the size and because of the commitment that we are a war unit. We're a family that is a war unit. Okay, because we have an understanding of what's out there. So I don't know that I'm connecting the dots for you. Be prepared for the Amalekites, okay? That's an Antichrist, anti-Semitic thing that will try to come against you. And their strategy was to pick off the weak and the slow. None of you are weak or slow, right? Okay, so you're fine on that. But you may have parts of your life. Do you understand? Yes. Well, he'll go after that. And you have to just be aware, not be afraid. Be mindful. Do you get anywhere that these guys are afraid at all in that? Not at all. But they understand the need of warfare, prayer, in order to get the, the job done. Okay? The water and warfare. And then this part, go ahead, just keep reading this. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book, and recount it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. This is a long time determined battle by the Lord and this is brought up in this month. So you need to get, this is not a short term thing, it's not a one time thing. I just referenced that's what, how many years after that, a thousand years or whatever in the book of Esther that Haman arises, the same one from that remembrance of Amalek. He's up there again. But the battle gets engaged yet again. Okay? End this, please. And Moses built an altar and called its name, The Lord is my banner. For he said, Because the Lord has sworn, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Okay? From what to what? Generation to generation. 
Okay, would that involve you then? Yeah, I think so. Because that spirit's still active and at work. So again, you're not afraid. You're just aware. In the time, breaking out of one mold before he sets you into another structure there in this time, warfare is part of the dynamic to work and work and work. And it's not just individual, it's as a body, right? He's doing this with the entire group. Even Moses is learning about leadership. Moses really wanted Aaron, right? Because he complained at the beginning, I can't talk right. Send, you know, bring somebody else. But now you've got yet another, which is her. Okay, you get this? And then the next section, I'm not even going to do the scripture for it, but is really what I would consider a management part, which is where his, his father-in-law, Jethro, comes to visit, sees him judging all day long. So you've got almost, it's estimated, two to three million people. And Moses is hearing their complaints against each other. Okay, You get, you, you get people out of their set structures and you put them into this mix and you're going to increase the number of issues around. And really what it reminded you of, it's like, it's like a, a cattle drive. Okay? Only with people, right? Because now you got them out from the, and you, they're all <laughs> bumping into each other. So there's a question there about how do you manage it? And what he does is he begins to delegate it down. Things that we're doing here to try to delegate down more, even the prayer coverage and how you're doing with that. But there's a necessity also through all of this that there's moving, it's moving, it's moving. God wants us letting the shift happen he broke the one structure. He's got us out now. He's molding it. He's shaping it around. But there's movement forward. Two other quick things. The first and second temples were started this month. They're going to be magnificent. But I want to tell you, when you're going to start a temple, this was how it will feel. <laughs> this is the challenge about starting, right? you got to be kidding me, God. you got to be kidding me. And it's like, you know what, I know the plans, I've got the resources, I can work this out. But that's often in this time when God's shifting around, he's speaking in this month. And so the question is here, what's waiting on you to begin? If God began the first and second temples, there's something about that because you are a temple. There's something, what is there something you're supposed to be establishing? And remember this, when they build a skyscraper up, the higher up it's going to be, the deeper they have to set the foundation. This is a time when things are started. That's a foundational level. You're not looking for it to pop up in right away. What's in the foundation there? What needs to get done? Okay, so I'm going to throw this at you. I just gave you, I didn't even give you all of it. I gave you a little smidgen, right? There's so much on Yisakar, yada, yada, yada. But, so let's look at this. In this month, I just want you to watch transitions out of the old structures and don't be so anxious for the new thing to appear. Oh, I, I'm not in this, I gotta do this. No, you don't. Sometimes you can just be there in a little bit of limbo. It's okay, he's working with you. Don't, don't think you gotta grab this right away. This is a time to get prepped actually for what's next. You look back, thank you God for all your faithfulness what's ahead of me now what are you doing and there's the, looking forward with that you look back at what he's done but without the longing to go back if you catch yourself oh that was oh remember the good old days be careful okay because part of that is anyway keep your eyes forward on what's to come there's an expectation with it Mark how well you engage these things. God's character and provision in this, this time. God's people, as we all reorient, not only to how God is moving in this, but to each other. When God's doing a new thing, it shifts how we orient to each other. Okay? How we connect it can pivot. It needs to. Her suddenly was moved into a different role, right? Joshua had not been put out on the front line yet before. That was new. Things shift. And then how we engage God's enemy as we draw up to the fight. Don't think that just because you've done this battle before, it's going to be the same way.
battle plans with the Lord change constantly. David knew that. Do I attack now? Yeah, go do it. Later on, do I attack now? No, wait till you hear the sound in the mulberry trees, right? Watch very carefully what you say. One of my favorite psalms. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. And then, who are you complaining about, really? <laughs> Is it really about that or this situation? Or are you really saying, you know, if God had really done this, I, I, be real candid about it. Come on. <laughs> Goodness gracious. And this thing, is the Lord among us or not? Be watchful on how the battle against Amalek will manifest. Seek and deploy God's battle strategy for that time. If you're not sure, then you reach out. Scotty, Kim, me, whoever, right? What, what, do you, what do we need to do? Okay. And then remember always this. In the second month, I am God, your healer. Okay? All of this stuff, there can be bumps and bruises and everything else, but God's in the process of healing us out of that last season, what he broke us free from, because there's something more. And this is where it gets to. That second month, I showed you all these things of the, the meat and the manna. But the bottom line is what he's doing here is to prepare a people. The whole trajectory of where God is taking Israel out to Mount Sinai is effectively a wedding ceremony. He's preparing the bride to say the vows and enter into a covenant out there. You have to understand the deep level of intimacy that Jesus is moving the church to when he gets them in the upper room in Jerusalem. And there's an intense experience and in union between God right, and his people by the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people think they're drunk. So in this whole month, when this stuff comes up, just remember, he's doing it to prepare you for what's next. Yeah? yeah? And be encouraged. He's the Lord, your healer. He's giving you discernment and wisdom now about the word so that you can discern the times and the seasons and know what you should do. You're mindful. You're watchful. You're not afraid. You're confident. You got me out of this mess before, God. You're going to get me forward. I can live in this level of amoeba-like thing, whatever you're doing. Push, pull, pull me kind of thing. Okay? You're all like, okay. Now you're in the stew. Okay? Now you're in the stew. We poured some wine in you earlier. Okay? It's helping to season it. There's been a fair amount of salt put in here, okay? So you've got the communion elements in you. That was grace to give you so that you could leave what was left behind, okay? We always have to leave the old month, have the grace to end that cycle, and then the grace to start into a fresh one, into a new one. I think I may have said too much, but Father, I just ask that you would shake and bake every person here, Lord. Just shake and bake them. Shake and bake them. Lord, you've got a strategy. You are not afraid of that spirit of Amalek. You have determined that from generation to generation you will blot out his name. And these are your people and your warriors, your sons, your daughters, your friends, your ambassadors. Lord, use them in this way. Heal them up. Show how you're going to provide. Show how to interact with each other. Lord, set a guard over our mouth. Let us not in any way imply the question, are you really with us? Because you are. And Lord, whether we're called to be a Joshua out on the field, a Moses lifting the staff, or an Aaron and her holding up hands, let us fulfill our roles so that we see the battle won. We love you and we honor you.
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.